patronizing and put me down. They called me stupid. They told me I behaved as if I'd been born in a barn. Townswomen who wanted abortions often used peasant women. And peasant women who wanted abortions often did their own. Anuta Timish carried out three such abortions. I used a medical instrument like an aerial made of stainless steel. Well, I put a serum for injections and a little bit of medical alcohol into the instrument. And I put it in my uterus. That was all. It took about a week. And during that week, all the fluid bled out. There was some pain, of course, but it came out. And what did you do with it? I buried it. What else could I do? I buried the fetuses by the electricity pole in my backyard. Nobody could look there. Nobody knew about it. Who was to know? Anuta says all the women in her village did their own abortions. Back in Bucharest, Nadia Pop didn't want any more children. When she got pregnant again, she thought of doing an abortion on herself when doctors refused to do one for her. I considered doing it on myself, but then I thought, am I insane? I could be sent to prison, I could die. When I had my earlier abortions, it never occurred to me that I might die. But once I had my girl, I couldn't take that risk because I had to live for her. It's estimated that over 10,000 women died from botched abortions during the Ceausescu period. Anuta Timish was eventually jailed for helping a neighbor with her abortion. Whilst in prison, Anuta gave birth to a child which she desperately wanted to keep. <laughs> Three weeks after I had my baby girl, they told me that they'd send me to a women's labor camp. I said, let me see my baby for the last time. And very reluctantly, some policemen made that possible. So I went to see her. I kissed her. And then I left. I never saw her again. As an illegal abortionist, Anuta would have been deemed unsuitable to be a mother. The Ceausescu family had come a long way from their beginnings in illiterate, dirt poor, often drunken peasant homes. 27 family members came to hold top positions in party and government. But the head of the family, for all his drive and ruthlessness, had his fair share of hang-ups. One of his closest collaborators was Stefan André. He was painfully aware that he was short, that he stuttered, that he was ugly. He didn't have any friends, and generally he was always on his guard. His wife played a completely destructive role. She was a mean, backward, shrewd woman who dominated him. Quite apart from her unique access, Elena acquired real power when she took control of all political appointments within the party. When someone was due to be named as minister, she'd say, I don't agree, and her opinion was final. 
There were many instances when I talked to him and he would tell me, make sure nobody knows, meaning she wasn't to know. Elena also used to interfere in cultural matters. One target was Stefan Andre's wife, film star Violetta Andre. I just don't understand why she hated me so much. She never even spoke to me. Elena was apparently jealous of beautiful women. There's also the suggestion that both Ceausescu's were prudish. Before 1972, I appeared in many, many films, both on the small and on the big screen. In these movies, I would show my legs, I would wear low-cut tops. I was shown in the bath, covered in bubbles, in a movie called Felix and Ottilia. This was disturbing for the Ceausescu's. Directors had got wind of Elena's dislike of Violetta's style. For example, I was starring in a musical and I was wearing a very revealing bikini. The director asked the costume designer to throw a chiffon top over my swimsuit so it didn't look so revealing. He asked why I wasn't wearing a one-piece swimsuit. I replied that I had never worn one. Soon after, Violetta was banned from TV and film. Elena and Nikolai Ceausescu were to get some useful lessons on manipulating their own image. Ceausescu was inspired by the cult of personality, which was a key feature of Kim Il-sung's regime in North Korea. When I visited North Korea myself, I realized how much Ceausescu had been impressed by Kim Il-sung and the way he ran things. They were very good friends, too. The Romanian cult of personality portrayed the peasant's son alongside the great kings and heroes of the nation's history. His wife was queen of Romanian science. Not a bad title for someone who had left school at 14 after failing nearly every subject. The popular displays of adoration knew no limit. Attending these displays was compulsory. A quarter of a million would take part in the annual Independence Day parade. One bad thing, you had to wake up very early to walk long distances, to get to the gathering point and then march on in front of the uh, leadership of the country. So that was quite unpleasant. On the other hand, it was a sort of a get-together. That was a good part because you met your friends and then get into a park or anywhere else where they had cheap beer, uh, sausages, sandwiches for half a price that uh, they were usually sold for in any other day. Uh, it was a sort of a uh, popular festival, it was a huge picnic. But when Nikolai Melinescu, seen here in the studio, joined Romanian TV news, 
he discovered that dealing with footage of their leader was no picnic. Certain images were simply banned. And that meant, let's say,